Hey guys, welcome to Bubble Man's World. Uh, I was just actually going to clean up a little sift that John B. brought by. I've got it right here. It's a, quite a low quality, I'm not sure what it is, but it had all this hair in it. So before I got it onto my screens, I figured I was just going to do a real quick cleaning out of the hair. So I thought you guys might be interested in it. So I'm going to set the camera up so you can see a little bit better. You're not going to see my ugly mug, but you're going to see what my hands are doing and how we're working the, the sift through the screen to fall down on the catch and then hopefully be left with the hairs on top. So let's get to it. Okay, so generally what I would do in this situation is I would kind of gently let it rain down. You can see it uh, already leaving quite a bit of dust. This is a very large screen, so it's not a small screen. And uh, we can use the brush a little bit to kind of brush it through. It's going to contaminate the brush quite a bit, but that's okay. I am using a really large amount of sift here. I wouldn't normally do this, but I thought it would kind of make a neat little video where we just watch all of this sift get worked through the screen and eventually be left with just the hairs, which is what should be happening here. Of course, I've gone and... Uh, I could have showed this same trick with a very small amount, but it's not how Bubble Man rolls, is it? Not lately. Maybe not ever. Nice pile falling through. Low quality though. You can see it's smoking. Oh, drop a little bit there on the side. Not overly worried about the quality because it's very dirty. Needs to be cleaned quite a bit. Right. That's some dark sift. Phone out of the way. Geez, get all this other good sift out of the way too. We don't want that sort of contamination now, do we? Be careful while sifting low quality sift around your high quality sift. Wouldn't that be brutal? You go to take a nice rip of your 99% barb dry sift and you've got this absolute schwaggles that's contaminated it. To think that someone considers this a final product. This is almost not worth being a first product. Like a starting product, you know? It's almost not worth the starting point. Just salt and pepper shaking it. You start seeing the little pieces, the little balls here in the bottom that are not quite breaking up, but have like pressed themselves mildly. And so 
we're going to be left with a lot of those in the end here. You see we're getting down to the to the nitty now, almost done. As we get down lower, it's the brush will even push it through faster. When it's a big screen like this, you can use the brush if you're going to try to use the brush on the smaller screen, you're going to come into problems. That's where the rigidness of the card and the flatness comes in handy. Imagine when they're making the Moroccan hash, how much of this resin and small particulate is flying around in the rooms that they're in. My nose is so itchy right now. And it's funny because people often ask me if, it's, if, it, if it gets itchy and I'm, usually it doesn't. When it's high quality, it doesn't at all. It's more likely when everything's broken down to these smaller low quality bits of plant matter that, <coughs> that you feel that uh, little bit of itch in the nose. Alright, so we've run oh, a good solid, I'd say 100, 200 grams through this little colander. As we get down lower, it'll, it'll make it even more difficult and you'll start seeing contaminants that would otherwise be in the hash. Not that I'd call this hash just yet. Let's call this a mild cleaning, a D herring of the farmer's grade sift. Farmer's grade, farmer's grade. Nothing wrong with farmer's grade, that's what you start with. You know? Maybe there's something wrong if you're putting it in your pile as the, your favorite thing. But if you're starting with farmer's grade, that's nothing wrong with that. <coughs> All right, so this is starting to, you can't really see, but it's feeling different under the brush now, and it might look different on the camera as well. What we've got now is we've got a collection of capitate stalks and cystolith hairs. And, you know, I didn't think I'd be left with this much. I thought it would be more like a small pile, but it, it does feel like the majority of what we have here on top is a contamination. Usually the heavier heads will have fallen down by now. It's not to say, you know, because it's a big screen, <coughs> I could still get a lot of this to fall through, but it's not necessarily something we want to do, so I'll take it down a little bit more, see if I can clean it up a little bit more, and then, um, yeah, it's pretty wild how the consistency has changed completely.
and left me with this just weird paper-like material. Definitely different from uh, the rest of the hash. I'll show you there. So as you can see, we've just got a real terrible quality of shit that we just took out of that hash, and look how much we took out of it. That's a fair bit. All right, well now that everything in my office is covered in resin, I'm going to pick this up. This was uh, what I worked through the screen. And it's still, you know, a terrible quality by, by most people's standards. But, much cleaner than it was before we started the project. Not a bad sign that some of the resin's sticking. Awesome. All right, so we'll probably get to screening this uh, over the next little bit. But for now, that was just a little tip on how you can remove this unwanted stuff from your hash. I really hope you guys can see the quality of that and how it's not even hash at all. It's a weird, like, substance that is not hash. Anyway, thanks for watching Bubble Man's World. We'll talk to you soon.